In class activity three, for the following control system, sketch the root locus plot, select the maximum value of K and related poles to design for a settling time less than four seconds and a peak time less than six seconds. So first we have the open loop gain is K times S plus one over S squared plus two S plus two. And we see here that we're going to have one zero and two poles. So this can be written as K times S plus one over S plus one plus J times S plus one minus J. So alpha, which equals the number of poles minus the number of zeros is equal to one. So theta is equal to two K plus one times 180 degrees over one or theta is equal to 180 degrees. Sigma D is equal to the sum of the poles minus the sum of the zeros. So that's going to be negative one minus J plus negative one plus J minus negative one over one. So Sigma D is equal to negative one. And now we're going to find our break in and break away points. So the polynomial, which is the derivative of K with respect to S is equal to negative the quantity S squared plus two S plus two times one minus the quantity S plus one times negative one times two S plus two, and we set that equal to zero. So when we solve for S one and S two, we get zero and negative two as the breakaway points. So now we're going to solve for the gain K equal to negative D of S over N of S when S is equal to negative two, and we get that the gain K is equal to two. And we know that K at s equal to zero is zero. So this gives us enough information to go and create a preliminary sketch of the root locus. So first we plot our poles and zeros. So here we have a zero at negative one. And we have poles at negative one plus j and negative one minus j. So the first thing we know is that the real axis loci is to the left of the odd number of poles and zeros. So that's going to be right here. And the next thing we know is that we have our breakaway points at zero and negative two. We know that the gain starts at k equals zero. So what happens here is these two poles come together and break into the real axis at negative two. And then they break apart and one goes to the left to the zero and the other one goes, one goes to the right to the zero and one goes to the left to negative infinity as k approaches infinity. And it will get to this zero as k approaches infinity. So our asymptote's 180 degrees, so that shows that it's right here along this horizontal axis. And the centroid of the asymptote is at negative one. So we're now ready to go talk about the design. So now if we look at our design constraints, the settling time is less than four seconds. So if the settling time is less than or equal to four seconds, then four over sigma d is less than or equal to four seconds and sigma d is greater than or equal to one. If the peak time is less than six seconds, then pi over omega d is less than or equal to six seconds, or omega d is greater than or equal to 0 0.524. So let's go take a look at the root locus first. So we see here that the root locus is stable for all K 
And since sigma d is greater than or equal to one, that's also going to always be true because k is equal to zero for sigma d equal one, and then it moves to the left. So really what we want to do is design for the omega d constraint and then confirm that it will also satisfy the sigma d constraint. So if we come back and look here, we have that the system characteristic equation, delta of s is equal to s squared plus the quantity two plus k times s plus two plus k, and this is equal to s plus a plus j pi over six times s plus a minus j pi over six. which equals s squared plus 2as plus a squared plus pi over 6 squared. And when you equate coefficients, this yields a is equal to 1.854 and 0.146 and k is equal to 1.7. So when you solve for the poles with k equal to 1.7, you get that the poles are equal to negative 1.85 plus or minus j 0.527. And with the maximum gain of k equal to 1.7, you do end up with a time to peak of six seconds and a settling time of 2.8 one, two seconds. And here's our confirmation using MATLAB. I'm going to drag the closed loop pole until I have an imaginary part around 0 0.52. And what I see here is that when I get to 0 I do have a real part of negative 1.85 and the gain is 1.87. Now let's start the final example of today's design lecture. For the following control system, sketch the root locus plot, select the maximum value of K and related poles to design for a maximum percent overshoot less than 4.32%. So first we have here that k times n of s over d of s is equal to k times s squared plus 2s. So we have two poles and no zeros. So alpha is equal to 2. Sigma d is the sum of the zeros minus the poles. So it's 0 plus 2 minus 0 over 2, which equals negative 1. Theta is equal to 2k plus 1 times 180 degrees over 2. So the angles are plus and minus 90 degrees. And P of s is equal to the derivative of k with respect to s or 1 times 2s plus 2 minus s squared plus 2s times 0. So s1 and s2 are equal to negative 1. And finally, the value of k at negative 1 is negative, the quantity s squared plus 2s over 1, evaluated s equal negative 1, which makes k a 1. So let's go sketch our root locus using the information that we have here. So if we make an angle of 45 degrees with our real axis here and here, then we know that that means that the real and the imaginary part have to have the same value. So what this means is that the pole has to be at negative one 
plus 1 for the design here and negative 1 minus 1 for the design here in order to be an angle of 45 degrees. So this means that our desired poles to meet this design specification are at negative 1 plus or minus j and we can shade off the region inside these two angles. Anything inside of there would meet our design specification. So let's go and equate the characteristic equations in order to determine the gain. Delta of S is equal to S squared plus 2S plus K and this must equal S plus 1 plus J and S plus 1 minus J. So S squared plus 2S plus K must equal S squared plus 2S plus 2, which means that K must equal 2 in order to meet this design specification. And since we have a system here that is stable for all K values, we know that this is a legitimate gain. So now let's go take a look at the MATLAB plot. So here is the root locus for our system. And I turn on a data tip and I am going to move the closed loop pole until it is negative one plus one J. And we see here that the gain is two. We do have a damping ratio of 0 0.707, which is exactly a percent overshoot of 4.37, which is close enough to our spec. And that our settling time is right at four seconds as well. And this concludes today's lecture on root locus analysis and design.